On our way to the Dallas Card Show, baby. I'm here with the boy Ryan. It's good. It's good. You know, we're out here, baby. On our way to the show. What is good? My name is Steven from Breakout Sports. Without further ado, let's get it, baby. We just landed in Dallas, head out of the airport, grab an Uber, and then we'll have about a 30, 40 minute drive over to the conference center. We are here guys, we get a special access look at what happens before the card show baby, before the madness. Let's see it, let's see it. You know, you normally don't get to see this type of stuff because normally it happens and everybody's, you know, doing things, but look at this. Beautiful, got everything nice and planned, people already setting up. Oh yeah baby, this is where you want to be, the calm before the storm. As you can clearly see now, the show has officially started. Check it out, guys. Beautiful. I'm going to give you a little scan of the room real quick. Starting out with some nice vintage cards. Oh, yeah, baby. Very nice. Coming here, walking around. Some of the guys here. Very cool. Some beautiful cards here. How you doing? What's up, what's up, what's up? Very nice. Give your name a little shout out to the camera real quick, put this on YouTube. Oh, uh, yo, Say one more time. Savvy Sports Cards. Oh, Savvy Sports Cards. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love what you guys have. Bunch of stuff out here. Um, quick question for you guys. How, how did you get into like sports card collecting? We do grading services for people. Okay. PSA and BGS. We're on Facebook, Instagram. Yeah, show us real quick. Awesome. Very nice. Okay. Do stuff like that, but how, how, how did you get into like sports card stuff? I've been right collecting there. forever. I love sports. I collected in the 90s, and then I started back up when uh, all this high end wax like 15 years ago. I collect Jordan, uh, all this stuff like Kobe, LeBron, and it's crazy now. So. Awesome, wow. That is insane. So, well, just a little kid, were you like, were some of these cards something that you pulled or just you happen to buy? Like, or? No, but like 10, 15 years ago, yeah, some of them. Wow, it's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, my man. Appreciate it. Yeah. What's up, guys? I'm with 716 Sports and my man Rob here. Rob, say hello to the camera. How's it going? What's up? How you doing, my man? He's got some awesome cards here, as you yeah. see below. A lot of mix between some vintage and then some newer stuff as well. So, Rob, question for you. Um, what is your or what was your like biggest mistake like collecting in the hobbies? Do you have any things that you like any like, hindsight bias, anything that really like stood out to you when you were collecting that you should, really should have done that you didn't? Um, I mean there's always gonna be those uh, those buys that you don't you don't buy that you wish you did. Um, I would say if, if you're close to buying something, take the gamble instead of uh, trying to save money on something. You know what I mean? The, uh, I've had deals where I could have bought them for 50,000 that are worth 100, 125 today, so. Wow, do, do you have anything like specific that you have in mind, perhaps? Um, I passed on a Jordan PSA 10 Fleer for 50,000 in June. Wow, those that's are, crazy. Are, so in, in June, it was really only 50K. And I know that seems like a lot for you guys, but like for, for the card it is and for the 10, like it's only 300, it's really like, what, 100,000 plus right now? They're 250 right now. Wow, that is insane. So yeah, you know, I guess we all have those. I bet at the time though, it was a ton of money and it was like, don't want to fork this over, don't want to get into a card like this, you know? It's sure. so kind of like one of those. Anywho, thank you, Ron. Appreciate no it and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. What is up, guys? Here with Santiago Sports yeah, and my man Tyler. What is good, bro? What's going on, guys? We're at the Dallas show. Yes, sir, yes, sir. So I have an interesting question for you. What do you think is more important, the grade or the card? Card. It, that's a tough card. question, but I would go the card. Really? And then, so explain yourself. Why so? 
Well, I mean, it depends what kind of card we're talking about. Like, this Prism stuff that we got going on today, there's a million PSA 10s of, like, a Luka, a, you know, Prism-based rookie. Um, the way I look at it is the card, like, a numbered card, like, a numbered Luka, for example, might not have the same desirability as, like, a, a Prism Silver. So, personally, for me, I think it's a card that's worth more than the grade. Awesome. Honestly, I would agree with you that with that too, especially because like it's kind of a slab over it. Even though it's super nice and obviously it enhances the value, mm -hmm. it's very nice. Like a grade at the end of the day is just a grade, and sometimes they come out in ways that you like didn't expect, or didn't really want, yeah. or that you would agree agree with. I know a bunch of people. Nothing's a guarantee. Yeah, they go ahead and there's like certain cards where they're like, yeah, this definitely should have got a better grade. There's some you probably have some cards right now that even like hold eights that you're like for sure you're oh, yeah. like, oh, that's a for sure nine or for sure ten, kind of like that. So I would definitely agree with you on that. It depends. I mean, you could look at a card with the with the microscope and you'll miss something. I mean, you never know. It's hard. It's hard. It's not as easy as people think. Oh yeah, no. It's like especially I've seen people like go with the I guess the grinding companies. Do they use like microscopes too to really oh, yeah. like zoom in on the cards? Magnifying glasses. They wipe them. AI. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> they oh, yeah, use they, robots. Yeah, so they've been trying to do some stuff with AI, right? I mean, I don't know if they're gonna do that, but I think that would uh, hurt a little bit. I think it would hurt. Really, I think it would too, because then things would get more like, I guess. Way I mean, strict, way more strict. Yeah, and then I guess there's some cards to where, like, for example, like a T206 card compared to a card today, like, the the, the six guidelines should be maybe a little bit different. Cause, yeah. Cause you can the yeah. Card, one card's 100 years old, the other one's you know zero years old. So it just depends. That's one thing I never really understood with grading is because the same guy is grading, you know, a million 2020 cards, and then he goes and grades a card from 1962. Like, there's different things that come in, into play. Like, there's different factors. Like, some things are harder to grade than others, uh, so you have to be a little more lenient with it, which is one reason that some people kind of question the grading companies. And I totally, I don't, I don't blame them uh, personally. I mean, you got these big companies, and they're basically the authority with it. So what are you going to do? Yeah, interesting. Anywho, I do want to zoom in here, see, see, all, see all your nice little cards in here. See some awesome refractors in here. Definitely, like, PC goals for sure. I Eventually, try. I would love to add these to a collection. Very nice. And then, how long have you been, like, basically in the hobby, so to speak? I've been doing this since I was a kid. My dad used to push me around in a stroller. It shows kind of like this. And uh, I recently opened up a store in New Jersey. Really? Uh, Matawan, awesome. New Jersey. So, uh, that's been open for almost five months now. Living the dream. Yes, sir. That's awesome. That's a great way to end it. Living the dream. Thank you, Tyler. I appreciate you, bro. No problem, guys. Follow us on Instagram at Santiago Sports, TikTok, Twitter, all that stuff. Yes, sir. You heard the man. Out here with Jugline Sports. Check it out with my man, Matt. What doing, is man? good, bro? Up, How are you Steven? doing real quick? They got a lot of cool cards here, particularly we're looking at these two LeBron gold cards. So tell me, uh, Matt, what, what is unique about these um, cards? So and the, cool, the way they're made. The cool thing way about the LeBron gold, man, it's a lot thicker card stock than the regular Bowman. It's like times four, all right? But the thing you got to look for on these is a lot of chipping that happens. Okay. All right? You see, look at the difference of the chipping. And you take this one right here for an example. Look at this. A lot of guys try to trim them. See the difference in the trim on the top? Wow. That's stuff you got to look for when you're buying these cards. That's pretty cool. And then I also want to say, like, for those of you who don't know these um, cards right here, they're really cool LeBron rookie cards. However, the way they were made, they are thicker card stock, I believe. And for some reason, they um, when they were pulled, right, they get peeled off of the packs. Yes, they do, especially the backs of them. Yeah, so, so you got to really watch out, guys. And although people think, like, I've seen YouTubers go ahead and they're like, Oh, you know, this card is going to go ahead and this card's probably going to end up pulling like um, a, a six or a seven. Like it doesn't look so good. Yeah. But in reality, because of that, they take that chipping into effect. You really have to like lock it out for this card because they're all like that. Yeah, and you might them. end up getting a better grade. Is that correct? Definitely. You might think. But man, if you see one, again, if you see one that's perfect on the back, look for little things like that. Because a lot of people will try to trim those. This card is one of those that will never be perfect, unfortunately. Yeah, and then I, I want to also say, um, as a note, that I, I know PSA, sometimes they're very good at, like, figuring out what cards are, like, trimmed and not. They've gotten, like, very um, adept at that. Yes. Do you agree with me on that? Them and BGS, yes, they're pretty good at that. Yeah, yes. so, like, you can't really, there's not really pulling a fast no, one like with this these. one right here, I bought this off of eBay and sent it to BGS with, like, 10 others, and it came back trimmed. So that's how I know for a fact it was trimmed. Yeah. And you can tell, man, all the They're super cool, beautiful cars, especially when you compare to, like, the Topps Chrome now, which has just been, like, sky high. Like, oh, yeah. I think this is, all, like, a, a, an awesome alternative for Definitely. people with one lower pop and then also just still a cool card, cool design. Definitely. Especially how thick it is. It's 
it's so thick, man, when you hold it in hand, you're like, man, it's heavy. You know, you, you get the Bowman, and it's thin. Yeah, and I know you guys can't see it a lot for all the all the viewers, but, like, this card actually is a bit thicker than a normal one. He isn't a card saver here, but it is, like, popping out. Like, it's a thick card sock, if you can see that. Maybe they can see I the know top. It's, the top might be better. Yeah, the top might be better to check it out, yeah. but it is a little weird. You can see it's thicker it's really than a thick. normal card right there. Yeah. Well, awesome. All right, thank you for showing us, Matt. We really appreciate Thanks, that. Man. Have a good one, man. Too, man. Check it out, guys. A little informal video here. I'm here with Ryan and with um, James, a.k.a. Elite Hunters. And we're just taking some videos here because check this out, guys. Got a real Honus Wagner card right here, Authentic by SGC. This is super cool. We got a Mickey Mantle rookie as well. We got some really, really amazing cards. See the Jackie Robinson. There's a Kobe Refractor 10, Pristine 10. It's hard to get because these like corners are really um, weird on it as well. Just those chrome cards. The we Hank Aaron this. 9, oh, which is insane and freaking awesome. This Mickey is. Mantle 8, which is I believe is close to like a million dollar card right there. That is beautiful. I've never seen the Hunt as well. And then there's also a Sandy Koufax 9, which is insane considering how old the card is. And then finishing it off, you got the Michael Jordan Gem Mint 10, which has been climbing an insane amount. Amazing stuff here, guys. Amazing stuff from Heritage Auctions. Guys, you guys are so Anytime. awesome, man. I'm a Good morning, everybody. Day two of the car show, baby. It is officially Saturday. Um, yesterday, we got a bunch of awesome stuff, and I can't wait to see what we find, what we trade for. And you always got to be um, looking and ready to do stuff. I can't wait to buy, sell, trade, network, and video for you guys. See you inside. Everyone, here right before the show is about to start. And what we want to do now is give you a special look at some of the key highlights from yesterday. So first of all, we got this LeBron James Bowman PSA 9. I was able to find this for a great price, and that's why I pulled it. I also have the gold one to complement this, so I think it fits my PC really well. And I'm super excited to have it. Like, this is a beautiful card. It has a lot of room for the future as well. So that's one of my biggest pulls. Next is this uh, baby right here, this Hank Aaron. I think the eye appeal on this card is absolutely amazing which is a super attractive quality of it. Um, the car just looks beautiful, and it's a 30-year Hank Aaron. I to, I'm gonna find it at a great price. Someone gave me like the price basically before it went ahead and spiked. So I'm super excited to have this. I'm super happy to have this in my personal collection. And last but not least, I finally got a Mickey Mantle. This is the first one I've ever gotten, and I'm super excited to have it from 1962. I really enjoyed this set as well, so it's a double whammy for me. And I found a deal on this where I, I want to give the advice to you guys. If you do ever find a deal on a mail, you might want to take it because they don't come very often. Awesome. So I'm going to share some of my favorite cards that I picked up yesterday. So this first one is the Willie McCovey rookie card from 1960. Take a look at this right here. It's a PSA 6. It looks really, really sharp. Only issue with the card, it is off center. But Willie McCovey is a great home run hitter. And I've wanted this card since I have a few of the 61s. Next card to show is the Ernie Banks rookie card from 1954. It is an SGC three case, but I've wanted this card for such a long time. It's iconic, the same set that is Al K line, and then also Hank Aaron. So, Ernie Banks. Next one I have is the 1971 Willie Mays. Now the 71 Willie Mays, or 71 cards in general, chip really, really easily. If you take a look at this card itself, it looks so nice. William Hayes, one of the best position players of all time. Now the last card I picked up, it's not technically a card, but it's from the Wheaties box, it is a Lou Gehrig. This is a 1935, or 36, Lou Gehrig. Just take a look at this and the colors and everything like that. This is technically my first Lou Gehrig card. Awesome piece to have to the collection. Can't wait to see what I pick up today. Let's go. What's up guys? I'm here with Jamil from Mealy Pops. So I wanted to ask you, um, Two quick questions. One, I want you to explain what your like Mealy Pop Madness is and like that whole event, like how it got started and everything. So I think that's super cool, and I bet everybody would love to know. Yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for bringing that up. So we started this thing in uh, early this year, and we said, you know what, let's do like a virtual kind of sale for people, trying to help them out, you know. And uh, <laughs> it started out with 50 cards and 50 people, and now we're at streams of you know 600, 700, 800 people watching in that hour. Um, and what we do is on Instagram about twice a month put all these single cards out and I in my mind I think let's give some deals to people let's have fun with this price it at comps or below comps you get cards a lot better when you make deals with us and it's pretty much a free-for-all people do fire sales and people do single card sales but 
I know my cards. So what we do is we lay about 50, 100 cards on a table, and cards are selling left and right. And Brian, who's just faithful, he's been working with that. Uh, follow him at Money Bison on Instagram. He sits next to me, and I just literally sell the cards, make the deal. Someone pays on PayPal or Instagram immediately, and then we ship them. You know, the next two days. So it's been a it's been a wild ride, man. But it's a, it's like a it's like a it's like a fire card fire auction mixed with a, a, a little bit of um, wheeling and dealing at a card show, at like a booth. And it, I, I have tons of cards. We might move through 300 cards, 400 cards in a matter of two sessions of 60 minutes. And you should check it out. We call it Millie Pops Madness. And wow. we have a lot of awesome. fun with it. Mealy Pops Madness, guys, you have all Mealy Pops on Instagram. And you, are you on TikTok as well? Yeah, so we, we shot Mealy Pops and Mealy Pops. Yeah, you can find us on uh, TikTok. And then also we do Facebook. Um, and uh, Twitter as well. Um, but if you, if you Google Mealy Pops, you'll find us on all those elements. Wow, that's really awesome. Then I'm gonna hit you with a little bit of a heavy hitter here, but where do you see the hobby in the next five years? Sorry, man, I, I can take some heavy hitters. Um, <laughs> so five years is a great question. I'll, I'll answer it this way. I'll say the next one year, I, I definitely foresee in the next 12 months, uh, more and more people getting into this. Because what's happened is, because of COVID, people have started to learn the hobby, just like yourself. And then what's happening now is now they're learning it, they're buying and selling in the market. So I don't think we've even hit like the ripe side of the buying and selling uh, in that. So first in a year, I think it's great. Five years, um, I, there's gotta have to be a, a, a slight drop in the overall growth in it. But I'll say this, demand is, 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 is much higher than supply. And it's basic economics when it comes to, you know, high-end product, LeBron James, Mike Trout, Bowman Cromer. I mean, all these things that we talk about and say, oh, they're gonna drop. People are buying them and they're putting them away. So you're not really seeing that high-end market drop. So in five years, if you got some really big stuff, I could not only imagine what that stuff's gonna be worth in five years. But um, yeah, five years, I think we're gonna be doing well. I think sports cards are here to stay. I think graded cards in the high-end market, you know, the lower population stuff, uh, it's here to stay. People want them. And uh, yeah, you can't go wrong buying, buying some of the legends and the greats, so. Oh, 100%, I completely agree with that. Thank you, Jamil, we appreciate it, bro. Thanks, guys. What's up, guys? Here with my man Rohan, and we are in the Dallas Card Show. Um, Rohan is, is a promoter of the show and does a really good job getting the word out. So, I wanted to ask you as a starting question um, how did you get into this card collecting? So, I collected a lot when I was a kid. Really, I got into it because I really wanted to have an autograph of Michael Jordan. And uh, the day I finally got it was like one of the best days of my life. However, when quarantine hit, I saw pricing go up on everything, and I was like, you know, maybe I finally got to get rid of this. And so I got rid of my Michael Jordan, but it was a car that I bought for 400, sold it for like above 2,000, and I was like, okay, something's up. This car should not be going for that much. <laughs> Do a bit of research, found out the thing's booming, and then so I was like, all right, time to get back into things. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's pretty crazy. And then when, like time-wise, when was that that you had the car? That was probably around like March, April time. Uh, oh wow! Last year, March, April, 2020. Yeah, I did those too, and I bet like when you got the card, it was like, oh, I'm paying a lot of money for this. No, especially like when you don't have a ton of capital, you're like, wow, that's oh a lot God, of money for a card. Yeah. Freshman in high school. <laughs> you know how hard it is to make money when you're a freshman in high school. <laughs> yeah, no, I completely understand that too. Like I'm like, wow, like I'm spending this much on the card. Like, I did the same thing with like a Jordan, and all of a sudden now they're like, like uh, balling out to where I could like just cash out if I wanted to. It's kind of just like an asset at that point. Exactly. No, it's crazy. Like, and I don't think people understand how. When you can, like these days, when you can just put in the effort, you can turn $20 into like 70K. When I, I'm, I'm telling you, when I first came to the show in August, that was my first time coming to a card show in, I think four years. I came in here with a $20 bill, left with 400 and a Tyler Hero RPA, which I eventually turned into my collection. Wow, and, that's insane. What, what Was that like one from like National Treasures or something? Or? The Tyler Hero RPA? Yeah. No, it's from Spectra, but I ended up trading it for a Luca Green Prism later. Okay, yeah, that's still super awesome and super oh, nice. yeah, no, crazy deal. <laughs> that's insane. So, yeah, guys, I, I think that, too, also, like, the, the fact that you can go and, like, trade up sometimes. And, like, uh -huh. maybe you can get, like, if someone's, like, normal comps, but you have, like, great trade value. Maybe you cash in on that, you know, get yourself another car. You're just, like, basically trading your way up to, like, what you want to get. Oh, yeah, definitely. And, I mean, you, this, with a show of this size, you can buy for any price you want and you can sell for any price you want. And I guarantee you will you will make more than you, you, you would normally get on eBay and you will buy for cheaper than you would on eBay. Oh, I 100% agree. And that's a, a reason why a lot of the buyers are so like excited to come here. So they don't have to pay the fees, they get the card, there's no shipping, there's no uh, if, ands, or buts. It's kind of like um, fully settled in. Sometimes people will um, go under comps too because you know these sellers, like they have to pay what, a 10% fee now, correct? Yeah, and I mean, 
especially when you're only paying a $10 entry fee, entry fee. Like there's so many opportunities you can get for that $10 that you won't get anywhere. Not on Facebook groups, not on eBay, just here. Like there's times where I've been looking for a card and I'll post it on like 17 Facebook groups and I'll get like two replies and it'll be the wrong card. <laughs> See, that's really cool. You really have just an incentivized marketplace, so to speak, for everyone to just come here and like have a good time and trade and buy sell cards. Yep, yep. For awesome. Sure. Thank you for your time, Rohan. We appreciate yeah, no it. No problem. What's up, guys? Here with Jake, aka the Cup Collectible Guru, and his crew right here. What is up, guys? Good question for you. How did you get into like Pokemon card collecting? So originally, I started off in cryptocurrency, and cryptocurrency has a lot of similar attributes as Pokemon, as crazy as that sounds. They're appreciating assets. The, the ability to store wealth outside of a bank account, and you can travel with them anywhere you go. So they can fit in a briefcase, they're liquid, they're expensive, they appreciate, and because of that, I was nostalgic about Pokemon from being a child. I grew up with base set, that's what I remember. I don't remember anything else. So when I decided I made enough money to start pivoting wealth into stuff like Ferraris and stuff like that, I decided I don't want that. I want hard assets that I appreciate, and what I chose was Pokemon. So I got into Pokemon because I figured it was an unregulated market that I could easily move into, that didn't have many important influencers, and I kind of came in and took it over. Yeah, that's smart. That's really good that you have that like foresight. A lot of it's like people can like, you know, people say they're going to do this, and you know, like that's like, like talk is cheap, but the fact that you actually have to go out and like make that action, go ahead and do it. So like really good for you. Um, proud of you for that. I know you're always out here doing like the, the box sales and stuff. Super cool. And uh, best of luck to you in the future. I appreciate you. Be well, my friend. What up, guys? I'm here with DFW Pokemon. Say hi, guys. What's Good going on, man? Scott. So, quick question for you. I'm going to hit you with a little bit of a heavy hitter here, but oh, where do you see the Pokemon card market in the next five years? So, I mean, just like it's been the last 20 years, it's only going to continue to rise. Um, more celebrities are getting in, more bigger names, more money. Um, kids are still hooked. Like, Pokemon only goes up, right? We've had a little dip since, like, October, but if you look at year over year, we're still up about 25%. So, I mean, Pokemon market next five years, you're going to see huge increases as well. So, I don't see it going down ever. Awesome. Very interesting. I know especially with, um, there's always someone that will come in and some, someone like a, a big name will come in with a box break. I know that's been like very big and that's been a very awesome uh, trend. What do, what do you think about like box breaks in the hobby or how they're so doing? Box breaks are awesome, right? It helps people get involved that can't afford a whole booster box, but they want like an untampered pack you know, with a chance of a hollow. So, you know, you kind of, it gets everyone involved and they open them on camera. So I, I think it's great for everyone. And YouTube videos are big now, right? So it's it's the new wave. So, I mean, you're going to see a lot more box breaks coming, especially with the 2000, like eight to 2012 era sets. It's about a hundred bucks a pack now. So it's in a good price point. Awesome. Well, thank you, Scott. Appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you guys too, as well. I love your cards. Look freaking amazing. I hope you guys have a great time here today. What's up, guys? Here, the man Sasha T. Sasha, what's up, man? How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. You any like awesome pickups um, throughout throughout just the weekend, or how's it all been? Yeah, we actually picked up a Kobe Exquisite from 2003, um, which is really cool. I got a LeBron X Fractor from Topps Pro, um, and a couple other things. But those are definitely the highlights. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. Very yeah, nice. Brother, um, so, question for you: What? Yeah. Um, I, I know you do a lot of stuff with like. Talked about like cracking um, some BGS slabs and stuff with um, PSA as well. Yeah. So my question to you is, which um, grading company do you think grades like the harshest and why? Like, who's the most nitpicky to you? Uh, I mean, I would say BGS probably, but I prefer grading with PSA. Like, I grade ninety nine point nine percent of my stuff with the PSA. Yeah. Um, but yeah, BGS definitely grades the hardest. I'd say. Now, I think that's interesting because, like, like when you agree that even though, like, you know, Beckett would like grade harsher and stuff, and I agree with that too. That um, sometimes, like, PSA is um, still the one like to go for with, oh, with no, people. It goes for more value, yeah, which PSA is interesting. PSA is the best value you can get for sending your cards, and I would recommend sending the PSA for sure. Um, it's just yeah, BGS 9.5 is right. The value is not there. So that's what I'd recommend sending you the PSA. Yeah, I thought it was interesting how they take into account. I remember your, I, I did watch your like BGS slab break video, and I was shocked to see that the um, the nine was the one that came yeah, back yeah, to yeah. ten, and then well, the, you the know nine and funny, a half. You know what's funny? I, yeah. I sent in a Jason Tatum green uh, BGS nine, uh, and I put it on a five day. I cracked it, and a PSA ten. I just found out the other day. So like, it's crazy to see like how grading is so subjective, right? You know, you might think it's a ten, I might think it's a nine. So um, I think cracking is a big play if you know what you're looking for for sure. I think it's interesting how like when you like did the crossover, you think like oh like like maybe they take the grade into account, but they really go from like I guess from square one when they grade yeah, a card yeah. like well, it, regardless. If you crack it, man, it's just raw again. So 
I mean, wow. it's just a fresh perspective of a person looking at it and uh, seeing if it's going to be a 10 or 9 or an 8 or whatever. Yeah, and then one more question for people um, looking to crack. When you do a crossover, you're, you're not allowed to send it in in a slab, correct? You do have to crack it open and use some no, tools? No, if you do or? a crossover, you can send it in as a slab. Oh, yeah. okay. So but does, does that cost more? Like, how is that? Same price. Okay. Same price. Same okay. Same level, same price. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, I guess my actual <laughs> final question would be, um, why would someone go ahead and like want to get it raw on a Switch as opposed to a crossover? Um, it, like for BGS 9s, there's no way it's going to be a PSA 10 if it's in the BGS 9 holder. So you'd want to crack it um, and then have, like let them look at it raw instead of seeing the BGS 9. Yeah. Oh, so they sometimes, so if you cross over, they do take it into account, is that correct? A if you, bit? Yeah, so like if you have, a, if you're crossing over a card and they have the slab, they do, they do look at the grade because it's right there. Oh, gotcha. okay, awesome. So I'm really glad you cut that out. Thank you so much, Sasha. We appreciate it. it. Thank you, dude. What is up, guys? Looking at these beautiful cards today. And we are here with Coleman Cards. You know me a little. Yes, I guess we can show the camera. Yes, sir. Hit him up in LA. So I wanted to ask you a um, very interesting question. I know you said you were from Los Angeles, correct? I'm from Arizona, but I live in Los Angeles. Okay, so it lives in Los Angeles. So I know there's been a lot of COVID restrictions over there. So I wanted to ask you how you've been getting around that and how you've been still making deals and doing things in the card game. So there's a great card shop called Burbank Sports Cards, which I go to like almost every day. And they put a table out front and we just hang out in the parking lot and just do deals and stuff like that. A lot of collectors show up. Uh, since we can't have sports card shows, uh, we all just go to that card shop, do deals with the owners, and do deals out front. Awesome. All right. Well, that sounds great. I'm, I'm so glad you've been very innovative, and like even when things get hard, you know, you just find a way around that. You still keep doing what you do, and you love what you do. Correct? Absolutely, 100. percent You know, if you love what you do, like you, where there's a will, there's a way. Exactly. But there's a will, there's a way. Thank you, Colin. Appreciate you. Absolutely. What is up, guys? Look what we have here. We are here with um, the guys. Who do we have here? Slabs. Show your slabs. Very nice. So tell me a little bit about your product. This looks super cool. So what we do is we make custom graded card displays for PSA. Also Beckett, which is over here. Um, it's a pretty easy way to set up and show off all the stuff that we spend so much money and time collecting. Easily mounts right to the wall. And in each uh, pocket, you'll have your little strip of nano tape. It keeps the slab in, as you can see. It's not wow. coming out. Very nice. So yeah, I want you guys to real quick to just to show us how this works. Check yeah. it out, look at this. You use the suction cup, boom, card comes right out. Right. And I want you guys to notice real quick, there's nothing different about any of the cards. The card's completely normal. There's nothing on the back. It's just a normal surface right here. Look, they didn't put any sticky things, just a normal card, like normal slab. One, doesn't matter. Any other slab would be, take any card this works with. Another grabber. Look at that, guys. In and out, easy. Nice little sucker technology. We see with Ryan's a Willie Mays. We still see an old card and put them in the, in, in, the, in the back of one, if you will. This is a pickup for today. But look, we're gonna show you that they, they didn't do anything with their cards. It's, it's it's literally any card works with this. It's super nice. It's something that if you really want to have your slabs, you want to show them off as opposed to keep them in some binder somewhere or some little box. It's always a great way to show off your cards, but this way it like accentuates like how they look and they have the whole like either PSA or Becca feel. So you guys, if, if you like really want these for your house and you want to decorate, I highly recommend going with them. This would be super cool to have. And, and if really nine's unique. not enough, come over here. Oh yeah, and the, yeah. okay, we let's see. We also have the 25 slab model. Wow, that, look at that. And you can fully customize collector's name, collector's IG. We even incorporate QR coding that will open up and link right to your YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, wherever you want it to go. We, we'll make it happen. You got 25 slabs and it easily mounts with two screws, top and bottom, directly to the wall, flush and clean. Awesome, that's absolutely beautiful. Thank you, Corey, Thank you. we appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. Just got back from the card show, so what do you think? Oh, it was a great show, guys. I had such a fun time. Either like picked up a ton of stuff for PC, 
And I, I literally think like in terms of card wise, I might have doubled my PC in terms of quantity, which is actually insane. And I'm so excited and I'm really excited to show you guys off at the end of the video as well. But to show off now, look at these pizzas. Awesome brisket right there. We just landed back in Orlando and Steven just got his email about his graded gold LeBron Bowman rookie card. So let's see what you ended up getting on this. All right, let's see it. Check it out. Ready? We're going to scroll down and reads ready, view details. Come on, come on, come on. The best. All right. Near mint seven. Very nice. I'm super excited with that, guys. Um, the card was pretty cheap. I kind of guessed it would be a seven. That is actually a really good grade for that card. I'm really excited to have that near mint. It's super excited to add to the collection. What is going on, guys? We are back at my place after the Dallas Card Show. And now, as we always do, let's see what kind of cards we picked up today. Starting us off, we have a 1957 Andy Carey. He wasn't an insanely well-known player, however, he was a Yankee and a third baseman for them. This card is very nice, a cool little PSA 6. Check the back real quick. Little OC from left to right, but still a cool card. Corners seem to be alright, edges alright. A definitely awesome addition to what I picked up today. Next, we got a Nelly Fox card. Now, Nelly was a Hall of Famer, played second base. This card is very nice, is a little off center from top to bottom. What I like to do is look at it sometimes horizontally to really see how much a card is necessarily off center. I think that's a cool little trick that I use. But this card is very nice, and I really love high grade vintage stuff, so I had to pick this card up. Next, we have a Ron Santo rookie card. This is a cool rookie from the Cubs. And you guys know I really love like any sort of um all-star like hall of fame type of people and i love to get their rookie cards so this is very nice got in a psa 5 from left to right it was a little oc as you can see here um little bit of dings in the corners and that's why i earned this grade as a five we're gonna check out the back also yeah you can see right there that corner does not look the best but you know it's okay it's a vintage card it's an awesome card from 1961. Next, going into some heavy hitters, we got a Carl Yastrzemski rookie card. This is from 1960. I think this is so cool. Um, this card has not too bad eye appeal, although it is a little bit off-centered from the top to the bottom or left to right, depending on which way you look at it. Really cool card. I think even though this is only a four, I think this card is severely underrated right now. I think it is an awesome card. And even on this one, the... Um, I appeal seems to look pretty nice, but in general, guys, for this card, it's not very expensive. Probably ranging from the um, like low, about around like two hundred dollar range. I think for um, for what the card is, I think that's extremely undervalued and definitely an awesome pickup. Next, we have a Cal Ripken Tops traded. I'm so excited to add this one to the collection because I do already have the other Cal Ripken, which is the one with the triple rookie card. Um, we have really nice um, subgrades on this one, two nines, eight five, and a seven five for the centering. And as you can see here on the back, it's from um, this top to bottom. Centering is not the best. However, I think this card is still awesome, and Cal Ripken is a go. Next, we have Ernie Banks. This card I ended up getting for a really good price. It's a PSA 7 from 59. I really love these sets from the 50s. I think the way they have the cards looks super awesome. And um, I believe the design is really unique. See, this one in particular is pretty well centered, which I'm very happy for as a 7. Um, Ernie Banks is an absolute legend. Short stuff for the Cubs. We're going to check the back. It also seems very nice all the way around. Honestly, if it weren't for um, everything here, I'm just taking a look. This might be one that 
I would be able to possibly send back to see if I could even get a higher grade. But I'm going to keep it in here for now because it's very nice. Next, we have um, Hank Aaron, Rip to the Legend, just passed away. Card, it's a PSA 6. Um, also with the Ernie Bags, this is one that I um, also might send back in to get graded because, wow, it looks nice. As you can see, it's pretty well centered for the most part. The only thing that's a little bit off is if I zoom in here, you can see the edges are not the best here. If I go closely, but other than that, the eye appeal looks absolutely amazing. Better than most of the ones I've seen online. Let's check the back. Also looks very nice. The corners seem to look nice. And this card is just absolutely beautiful, guys. A third year Hank Aaron card. Next. We got the man himself, Mickey Mantle. This is the first mantle I've ever picked up, and I'm super excited to pick up this card. Um, it does have a little bit of a wear and tear on it from the like, corners and everything, and also the edges. But the card is somewhat well-centered for a 62, because I know the 62s aren't uh, centered very well. I'm so glad to be able to pick this one up, especially in an iconic set like 62 for Mickey Mantle. This is a beautiful card. We got the PSA grade as well. The back doesn't look too shabby other than from you know left to right being a little up-centered. But yeah, Mickey Mantle card, first in the collection. Super excited to have this one. Beautiful portrait of his face. Now we have a LeBron um, Bowman Rookies and Stars card. I do have a gold one. You guys saw it. Just got back the grade from that. So I'm pretty excited. Um, this card looks awesome. Got in a PSA 9. I think it is underrated compared to the Tops cards. I think the design especially is beautiful. An awesome alternate LeBron Rookie card. Looks awesome. It still has the Tops logo even right there, which is very redeeming. Super nice. Card number 123, LeBron James. And next, we got a Yogi Berra rookie card here, guys. I know the grade isn't the best on this one, but wow. like Any sort of Hall of Famer like Yogi Berra and to get his rookie card is insane. In this set, they did it in little squares. The corners are a little beat up. The centering is not the best. But regardless, this card is intact, no creases, and a beautiful card that almost pulled a 3, but they decided to go and be conservative and give it a 2.5. Very nice. And fine, last but not least, I'm super excited to add this to my collection. My first graded Kevin Durant card that's actually going into my PC here. We have a Topps Kevin Durant um, black card. I know there's other variations of it. However, I was able to get the black one, which is in pretty low pop with it being around 617, I believe. And as you can see with this one, it looks extremely nice. Centering is there. Corners are there. So the right corner is a little nick. But if you saw the other versions of these cards, it's very hard to pull a nine. So I'm super excited. We're going to take a look at, at the back of this card. Very nice. Little bit of whitening on that corner right there. And a little bit on the edge, as you can see. But other than that, this card is absolutely beautiful. I'm so excited to um, keep it in my collection. This one's going to be here for a while, for sure. I've had some Topps ones, but none that look like that. Okay, so I am back in Orlando. And here is all my pickups for the weekend. Ton of stuff, everything from modern to vintage. So let's get started. I'll go over more of a modern and low to mid-end type stuff. So first, I have a Topps Finest Randy Moss rookie card. Larry Fitzgerald rookie card. Albert Pools Chrome second year. Tukel Makars. Vaughns. Bayron Laura. Got a George Kirby Refractor. A Sixto Sanchez. Two Josh Jung. The Martian, a few prisms uh, for baseball, so refractors type stuff. I have an Andrew Vaughn here out of 30. Another Andrew Vaughn. I don't think this one's numbered. It's not. And then a Riley Green right here, and this was out of 30. Prism draft gets really no respect in baseball, but these are very low numbered. Uh, being 30, some of these, and they're colored refractors, so I decided to pick them up. Got a few CJ Abrams, so I got his... Chrome there. Got two of these Crusades. Got a silver. And then I got one of his autos. I think this is from Leaf. It is. 
I got a few Acunas, so I got a shock and then two optics. So can't go wrong with those. So that was this much right there. So much more to go through. All right. Bellinger rookie. Vlad, no number, super short print. I don't know if it's a super short print or just a short print. Let me know down in the comment section below, but decided to pick one of these up. Vlad lost a lot of weight, so I'm going to give it a chance. A soda gallery. Two more sodos. These are Bowman Bess. A soto select 2018, or not 2018, 2020. This is number 299. A soto refractor. And then some Tati stuff. So I got his Bowman Platinum. Feels cheaper, lower end rookie cards. And then this one I really like a lot. This one is numbered to 150, also from Bowman Platinum. Okay. Now we're all into the jersey and autos. So first, got a Jack Flaherty numbered to 50. Definitely need to put a penny sleeve on this because there wasn't one. A little damage because of that, but that's okay. Number to 50. We got a dry still autograph. One of the best players in hockey right now for the Oilers. Plays with McDavid. Really, really cool with that. Got a Sergey. This is a part of his hockey stick. One of the top 100 hockey players of all time. Super thick card. A Wade Boggs Museum Collection Quad Relic. Kershaw Relic. And then a Chuck Liddell. Uh, this is a Matt Relic. I wish it was kind of like a jersey or something like that. They don't really have jerseys in UFC, but either way, cool pickup with that. And that's a 2010, so one of his earlier cards. Last really modern pickup was this Matthew Stafford refractor. I have no idea where Stafford's going to end up going. I kind of have a feeling he's going to go to the Patriots, um, but his card prices have been going up. Stafford's a good quarterback. He just played for the wrong team for most of his NFL career. So being it's a refractor, chrome rookie, it was worth a shot. Now I got some vintage hockey. I didn't really pick up a ton of vintage hockey this show. I really didn't see much, so only being three cards. I actually picked up the same Bobby Orr last time I was here, um, but this was a SGC9. This one's a lot less condition. This is probably a six or seven, but still a really nice card. Can't go wrong with the Bobby Orr. Probably want to trade it eventually for another Bobby Orr that I don't have. Next, I got a Steve Eiserman rookie card. Eiserman helped with Lightning, and uh, this is centered pretty well. I know they have a lot of issues with that tops version. A little OC though. And last, a card I've been actually wanting for a while is Dryden. Dryden is one of your best uh, hockey players of all time uh, as a goalie. He's a top three to top five. He didn't actually play that long as a goalie. He ended up retiring to go into law, I think, or business. I can't remember. Either way, he put up insane stats the few years that he was a goalie. You might be thinking this is a pinhole up here. It's actually on the penny sleeve. It's not on the card itself. So really, really cool card. Wanted it for a long time. And I love the 71 designs. So now here's the best stuff that I got from the show. So we're going to start off with a 1961 Juan Marichal. I'm going to move this over here a little bit so you can see better. 1961 Juan Marichal. It's card super sharp. It is off-centered though, but either way, it's still graded a five and a half. Looks cool. I think Marichal is really underrated for what he's done in the 60s as a pitcher. Next, I have a 1962 Hank Aaron, also a five that you can see there you go always the home run king next i picked up a 1970 nolan ryan now i already have the 70 nolan ryan i'm missing the 69 and the 68 so i'm going to be looking to trade this one uh for one of those two years uh the reason why i picked this up though besides it being in good shape is it's a high number card so you can see right here it is number seven one two so this makes it a really hard card to come across because it's one of the it was the last set uh produced in 1970 um still hasn't met obviously and it is in really good shape for that year and being a high number so looking for the 69 or the rookie and i know i'll make that happen so next card right here is the 1960 william mccovey now this card is 
absolutely gorgeous. You can see this close up. Amazing card. Off centering or being off centered is the reason why this got graded a six. But either way, I don't really care too much. I wanted a McCovey rookie for a long time. I do have his 61, which I think will grade like an eight, nine, maybe even 10. It's the nicest 61 I've ever seen. Um, but this complements it really, really well. I've wanted it for a while. So now I still have to get the Yastrzemski from 60, but I got the McCovey. Next card here is the 1971 Willie Mays. This graded A7, but it's such a sharp card for 71. 71 is a notorious year for low grades. Um, this one is centered pretty well, a little off-centered, uh, but either way, picking up Willie Mays cards is always a good thing to do. One of the best players in baseball, definitely a top 10 player of all time. And this card looks amazing. Awesome. So my last normal size card is a huge PC pickup. It is the 1954 Ernie Banks. You can see that right here. This card, I don't know. It's just something about this card, the 54 design, I, I just love. Look at his smile. Look at the batting stance, the old Cubs logo, the coloring on it. Just amazing. This is, and the SGC tuxedo just makes the white card stand out so much more. This was graded at three, which I think is appropriate, but the visual appeal on this, really, really cool. You can kind of see. I'll have that upside down. Ernie Banks. So I'm going to leave that. Actually, I'm going to put that over here. This next card, take up a lot of room. So... It's not really a card, but it is a cutout of a Wheaties box. And it is my first ever Lou Gehrig. So this is a 1936 Lou Gehrig. Huge card. This is a yellow vinyl in the background. You can see it takes up a decent portion of that. So my first ever Gehrig. I know it's not a normal size card by any means, but having this slabbed up, authenticated, looks amazing. And I can finally say I own a Garrick in my collection. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. And let me know down below what is your favorite pickup from the show between Steve and I. Also want to let you know that I've created a free card show guide telling you everything from the best shows to go to, to card show etiquette, to finding deals, and much more. You can check down in the description for the download link. It is absolutely free. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another card show video.